Dysphagia is difficulty or disruption of any stage of the swallow process. This may be due to structural, developmental or neurological impairment. Structural difficulties include conditions such as cleft palate or cancers affecting any of the structures involved, such as the tongue or the larynx. Conditions causing developmental, physical or learning difficulties may also result in dysphagia. Dysphagia is a common consequence of stroke and other acquired neurological conditions. The main risks associated with dysphagia are malnutrition, dehydration when the person is not getting enough food or drink, or aspiration when material enters below the level of the vocal cords and the normal response to aspiration is to cough. So dysphagia during the oral stage or phase of the swallow can result from altered structures or muscle tone affecting the jaw, the lips, the tongue or the soft palate, disrupting retention or preparation of the bolus. Sensory impairments such as following surgery or as a result of stroke or cognitive difficulties may result in failure to detect material within the mouth. Either may result in uncontrolled material entering the pharynx and the open airway. Control transfer of the bolus is essential to triggering the pharyngeal phase. Even swallowing saliva is controlled, even though we are often not conscious that we are doing it. Loss of sensation or neurological failure to trigger this phase will result in absent or delayed initiation of pharyngeal swallow. Material enters the airway resulting in aspiration before the swallow. Incomplete closure of the vocal cords, perhaps due to localised nerve palsy, can result in aspiration during the swallow. Failure to clear the pharynx, for example because of incomplete elevation of the larynx, will result in residue remaining within the pharynx, which can result in material spilling into the airway, causing aspiration after the swallow. During the esophageal phase, loss of peristalsis, a muscular stricture or an obstruction, for example by a tumour, will result in slowing or failure of transport of bolus to the stomach. If this is very severe, it will result in regurgitation of material into the pharynx, carrying the risk of aspiration. If stomach contents are regurgitated and aspirated, this carries the highest risk of development of aspiration pneumonia. The normal response to aspiration is a cough, as you will know if you've ever experienced food or drink going down the wrong way. Some developmental or acquired neurological conditions result in loss of sensation, which results in a weak or absent cough, or even a delayed cough. Patients with poor respiratory status may also have a weak cough. If there is no cough response, this is called silent aspiration. Failure of secondary protection, i.e. the cough, will result in, in a significant risk of chest infection or pneumonia.